All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for coming uh, in the 2 o'clock slot, also known as nap time. Um, we appreciate you guys joining us. Um, as she said, the, the whole point behind this, uh, this talk was really to kind of um, convey the importance of risk management um, as part of an overall security program. And so uh, Karen and I kind of intend to go through some of the basics of risk management, um, and then hopefully we'll have some time for some live action role playing, which as far as I know, uh, I've been at LastCon ever since we started, um, and we have never had any LARPing. In fact, any, any security conference I've ever been at, I don't think I've ever seen any LARPing. So hopefully you guys will participate. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to laugh together and it'll be a blast. So um, as she said, I'm Josh Sokol. I figured it was really close to Halloween, so um, I, I put up a really old, this is like over a decade old when I used to play in a band, um, really old uh, picture from a Halloween show. Um, as she said, I run the security team over at National Instruments. Um, what she didn't say is I'm the vice chair for the OWASP Foundation that's on the Global Board of Directors. So if you have any complaints about things we do at OWASP, uh, you can well, talk to somebody else. Um, I, I am the creator and CEO of Simple Risk, which is fr a free and open source risk management tool. It's what we're going to use today, um, and hopefully you all will get some experience with Simple Risk today as part of our LARPing exercise. Um, and then I'm also one of the co-founders of LastCon here. Um, hello, I'm uh, Karen, and uh, um, so I'm a, a principal and a security architect for Gmoto, and uh, I'm also an inventor. I have uh, 20 patents, and I have many pending. Um, that is not a Halloween. <laughs> so to, that's real. So I was an uh, Olympic torch barrier and, uh, uh, in the 20, uh, 2002 Salt Lake uh, City Winter Olympic uh, when the uh, uh, torch relay passed through Austin. When, when we first put this deck together, I was like, oh, cool, you include a Halloween picture too. And she's like, no, that's real. <laughs> So that's actually for real. <laughs> that's why I put the logo there. There's and, a clicker uh, right there too. Yeah. And uh, um, yeah. Uh, again, I'm a long time uh, OWASP member and uh, uh, last count volunteer since the very beginning. And uh, for the first one, second one, and uh, yeah, with Josh, with some other people, we actually uh, started the last count. Um, before we start to talk, I want to uh, ask you a question. Who has not looked at their cell phone today? Raise your hand. So I don't see anyone has uh, uh, raised your hand. So uh, we know um, technologies have, bring, have brought us uh, a lot of benefits. Uh, and we use internet, we use cell phone, we use our smartphones, uh, we use computers uh, in every aspect of our lives. Uh, and uh, pretty soon we'll have you know, we'll probably use self-driving cars. At least I'm expecting when I'm getting old, uh, you know, I can't drive. And also we have smart homes. Uh, and so technology is basically running our lives, okay? And uh, on the other hand, uh, it can also make all of us and the society vulnerable. You know, we have our homes, our government, our whole infrastructure runs on uh, technology and that they may fail, they may be abused, or maybe attacked. Yeah, and I, I'm sure many of you remember uh, three years ago, about this time, the target breach. Personal information of 110 million customers has been stolen. And uh, you know the cost for, uh, for target? It's $148 million, not even counting the change to EMV card. Anybody knows the EMV card, the credit card with, with chip, right? So not even counting that cost, $140 million. Uh, what happened? It's actually quite simple. Somebody stole the, the username password of their HVAC vendor and then used that credential, entered the target network. If you think about it, uh, that credential should have limited rights, uh, right, for uh, monitoring the energy use or control the temperature. But in the fact, uh, the attacker went through the network without being detected. And then what? The attacker download the malware to all the point of sale terminals. So when you swipe your credit card at, a, uh, at target, uh, your information is stolen. And then when they steal your credit card information, what can they do? 
they, they, they make duplicated cards. They sell them in the black market. You know, that's one the reason they sell, they change to smart card base, the, the EMV card. That's a different story that at least you cannot duplicate. Uh, so uh, Target is not alone. And uh, there are all these companies, they are all have uh, one kind of breach or another. They lost millions, uh, tens of millions uh, users information or data record. In fact, I work, as you know, we, I work for uh, Gmoto, which is a digital security company. We have something called a uh, breach index level. In, uh, this is an older number. In 2015, 1,600, more than 1,600 data breaches uh, leads to uh, more than 700 million uh, data records being compromised. Among them, 53% of data breaches uh, identity theft, okay? That affect everybody. It's not just company, it affects the individuals. All right, so, you know, the, the interesting thing when you look at the, the target breach as an example is people all have their own opinions about what went wrong, right? Was it uh, the target trusted a third party HVAC vendor um, and, and they put that trust in that company and then that trust was breached? Or was it the HVAC vendor and their failure to protect the credentials? Or once the, the attacker made their way from the HVAC vendor credentials onto the target network and breached the systems, was there a failure there? Or, you know, I've, I've seen reports about how, you know, the fire eye alerts were going off at target and nobody was looking at the law. And, and, you know, the interesting thing about all this is that none of that really matters. The, the real issue behind what happened with Target was that they didn't do the proper risk assessment to identify what those risks were, and they didn't figure out, here's how we mitigate those risks. So we're all targets, right? Risks are everywhere. They're, they're uh, everywhere from, you know, the alarm system that I have on my house because I'm afraid that somebody's going to break in and steal my, my nice stuff, um, all the way to my enterprise and, and the systems that we build and things like that. So really the, the question that we ask is how do we protect ourselves and the customers that we serve? Um, how do we actually manage risks? And so this is really what we hope to, to address here today. Um, so let's start and kind of talk about what is risk, right? Um, risk is a potential that an action or an activity, including the choice of inact, uh, inaction, which happens all the time, right? Somebody says, oh, we're not going to do anything about that, um, will lead to a, a loss or some sort of undesirable outcome. So technically, risk is basically the probability of an attacker exploiting a vulnerability and causing some harm or some loss. Now, the cool thing is that risk isn't just a vulnerability. Risk isn't just, um, you know, if this, if this thing happens, then it's bad. Uh, risk can be all over the place. Risk can be technical, but it can also be financial, right? It can be the risk of financial loss. It can be the risk of reputation damage if something bad happens. Um, it could be regulatory issues like, hey, um, you can't process credit cards anymore because you're no longer PCI compliant. Um, business interruption, even safety hazards, things like, hey, you you know, there's a hole in the roof and there's a puddle on the floor and somebody can slip and fall, right? That's a risk and that's something that we need to capture. So risk management is a process. It's a process that we use to identify and assess the risks that are in our environment. Once we know the risks that are in our environment, our next step is to determine how we're going to prioritize what we're going to fix. Because anybody here have unlimited budget? No, no, okay. Neither, not, not today, right? Neither do I, right? And so really what happens is we're gonna end up with more risks than we have money to fix it. So somehow, some way we have to figure out this is the most important thing that's gonna cost the least amount of money that I'm gonna be able to fix today or tomorrow or with the limited resources that I have. And resources isn't always just about money. Sometimes it's about people and, and work cycles, right? Um, so once we do that prioritization, we determine what we're going to do with this, right? Well, how are we going to actually fix this problem? And then the whole idea behind our risk management process is really to drive visibility and accountability for management, right? Because those are the people who hold the purse strings. So I, I, we just said, right, not everybody here, nobody here has an uh, unlimited budget. And what that means is we're all fighting for the dollars within our organization. We're all trying to get, you know, a little bit more of those purse strings, uh, a little bit more of that money to be able to afford 
fixing these issues. And so risk management is the way that we highlight these issues to our managers, uh, to the executive team, and we say, look, here's the biggest risk in our, in our environment. These are the most critical things. Here's, what's gonna, here's how we plan on fixing it. Here's what it's going to cost to fix it, right? So risk management is really the process that we use to drive those improvements in our environment and really justify how we're spending money to the executive team. So how does risk relate to, to AppSec? Well, um, we have our, our traditional CIA, confidentiality, uh, integrity, and availability, right? And so risk is all about how do we identify those things? How do we figure out places where uh, we might have a breach in confidentiality, where, where we might lose that data. Um, that's a functional requirement, right? Um, integrity, how, how do we figure out areas where we might breach the integrity of the application? Somebody might modify it uh, or, or change the data underneath it. And availability, right? We just saw one of the largest, uh, the largest uh, DDoS attack in history uh, with DIN uh, last week, right? And so availability, these things are going to become critical and making the right risk assessment, being able to look at your environment and say, this is a problem, right? We don't have any DDoS prevention in place, and so DIN easily could have been us. These are things that we have to recognize. Going along with these guys, we have authenticity, authorization, non-repudiation. These are all things that we have to consider when it comes to application security, and specifically with respect to identifying application security risks. Uh, when it comes to methodologies, there's lots of different methodologies out there. Um, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. That's the good thing. Um, the problem is we kind of have to sift through these and figure out what's right for us. Um, when I was first doing risk management, um, I looked through a, a whole bunch of these. I can't, I can't honestly say that I've looked at all of these, um, but I ended up kind of settling on the NIST framework. And the reason why I settled on NIST uh, was because NIST 800-30 was a very specific process for here's how you do risk management. It seemed fairly simple. It was a huge document, right? Almost 100 pages. Um, it was a huge document, but it was like, okay, you, plan, you, you submit your risk, you plan your mitigation, you make sure that somebody's reviewing this on a regular basis, uh, and, and that was basically it. There was a whole lot of other stuff in there. They used a lot of words, but that was, that was in essence what I was doing. And the cool thing about NIST is it's the federal government standard for risk management. So when it came down to it, you know, I could say I'm following the NIST process and hey, it's good enough for the federal government, it's good enough for all the state governments, all the local governments, the military, right? It's good enough for me. Um, so that's really where, where I settled on that. So you know, when it comes to choosing which one you should use, um, don't let the complexity prevent you from starting, right? Um, it's something where doing something is going to be better than nothing. If you can get in there and you know, get a couple risks into the system, then you at least have a starting place for that prioritization process. Um, all these things, you, know, you look at all these different ones, always, always treat them as guidelines, not as examples. Um, the reason being that if you treat them as guidelines, it allows you to kind of break outside of those guidelines if you find that something doesn't fit you exactly. Um, you don't ever want to follow them word for word. And then, you know, obviously we want to understand the basic concepts behind them um, and use tools. And, and tools was really the area where I struggled um, when I first got started. Okay, and I want to, uh, us to have a common understanding of all these terms. Uh, uh, and then and their relationships. We're going to use this uh, later on, okay? So uh, the first thing is uh, we need to um, really identify and understand what is it that we want to protect, right? So this we call asset, okay? As uh, examples, uh, if you uh, uh, depend on uh, at which level you're doing a risk uh, assessment, uh, it can be a server, if you consider a network, it can be a service. For example, you provide a, um, a payment service. So that service itself is your asset. It, all, it could be data. In the, for example, the um, personal uh, identifiable information, PII, that is an asset. So you first need to identify what are the assets you want to protect. And then you think about it, uh, uh, who wants to damage or get these assets from you, right? So uh, it could be some hackers, it could be uh, competitors, it could be terrorists, it could be many things, or e even insiders. So we call those threat agent, okay? So we have asset, the threat agent try to get our asset. And then, uh, so the threat agent 
trying to, let's in this example, try to steal our data. So this is a threat, okay? So we have threat agent try to, in this case, steal the uh, PII, okay? So we have a threat. And then uh, we think about it. Uh, how does he do it, right? And then we have comes to the term vulnerability, right? So your system, regardless large or small, right? Your system may have vulnerabilities. The thread agent will post the thread through exploits your vulnerabilities, okay? So in this case, if your data is not encrypted in plain text, that is a vulnerability, right? Even your insider they get the data, they, they can get the data because it's not encrypted. So then we have a risk. So the risk is a possible uh, PII threat, thrift, uh, theft, okay? So the relationship, uh, the vulnerability can lead to a risk. The threat agent basically exploit vulnerabilities. This pose a risk to the asset, okay? All right, so we need to go through our system to identify these things. Once we identify the, a bunch of list, uh, risks, then what do we do, right? And uh, as Josh mentioned earlier, you don't have unlimited uh, budget uh, to fix all the risks you are facing, and some of them you, maybe it's very difficult to fix. So the next thing we want to do is we want to assess the risk so we can prioritize what we want to do. So one of the, there's different ways to uh, evaluate, uh, the, to give risk a score, basically. There's different ways. Uh, the classical risk formula is like this. It's, you consider the likelihood, which is the possibility of some bad thing may occur. So it depends on many things. Have this occurred before? Have this occurred inside your company before? And how, comp how difficult it is uh, uh, to, uh, for the threat agent uh, to actually exploit this vulnerability. You also consider what is the reward for the hacker or for, the, uh, you know, for your competitor to do this. If there's no reward, if it's very high complexity, why does he do it, right? So these are all considered as part of the uh, likelihood. And then you want to consider the impact. What, what is the actual loss which can be Financial loss can be reputation and et cetera. What is the actual impact, actually loss, if this event indeed occurred, right? So uh, that's the, how you calculate the risk. Uh, typically, this is not a unique way. Huh? This is one of the way, classical way. Typically, you classify, uh, you, you give some numbers, right? Between one to four or whatever numbers. So if the, the likelihood is very, very rarely it can happen. The impact is very s small, then your risk is low, right? And uh, if it happened, the, the likelihood is very much like, uh, likely it's going to happen. So this is the excess, you go to this end, and uh, the damage is, uh, is, uh, is very, very bad. Then you have very critical risk. So, um, and then there are other ways, uh, other systems, so we'll, we'll see it later. For example, CVSS is one of the uh, most commonly used ways to score the vulnerability. Remember, we say vulnerability. There's a difference of vulner vulnerability versus risk, right? Remember that picture? So CVSS is a way to score the uh, vulnerability. And then we have DREAD. That's a, uh, uh, another way to score the risk. Of course, we have uh, OWASP, risk. Uh, risk rating uh, method, which uh, yeah we can see uh, later uh, in the demo. So there's different ways. Then you want to decide which ways you want to rate your risk. Uh, you probably want to do it consistently with, within your system, right? <coughs> Let's see. We have identified the risk. We also uh, scored it. We know which which one is high risk, which is low risk. Then what do we do? Okay, we need to manage the risk. Uh, so um, we always tell our technical people, risk management is a business decision. Like Josh was saying, it gives a visibility to management, right? And that's yeah, based on your, your you know, business situations, you decide which one you want to do, which one you don't, right? And then for the 
typically, there are four different ways to, uh, to manage the risk. These are four the typical ways. You can avoid the risk, right? You come out some alternatives so that the risk do not, does not uh, realize. For example, driving is risky, right? I can decide I work from home so I don't drive, or I take public transportation, or I ride my bicycle. So that is avoidance, right? That, that is one of the strategy. Another strategy is transfer. You transfer your risk to somebody else. A typical situation, again, back to driving. Uh, driving is risky. I, if somebody bump into me, my car may be damaged. So I buy car insurance. That is another way, is transfer the risk. And then it's mitigator. You eliminate or significantly, significantly reduce the level of risk. For example, get back to driving, you put your seatbelt on, right? That is a mitigation in case you have a car accident. You have some protections. Yeah. And uh, another thing you just accept, uh, do nothing. That is also a strategy, right? Driving is risky, I'm still driving, right? So uh, you can have different uh, strategies uh, uh, for dealing with the risk. Again, this is a business decision, OK? And uh, so your business decision is basically, uh, well, part of it is based on the cost and the benefit analysis, right? So for example, uh, you want to uh, mitigate a risk. You want to add another layers of firewall. Let's see, you add another layers of wolf, right? And then you will consider your cost and the benefit. Yeah. And then uh, let's talk about the mitigation. Let's assume we have decided to mitigate the risk. OK, so uh, uh, we, normally we call it mitigations, or we call controls or countermeasures. They are all the same, well, same thing with different name. It's basically a solution put into place that uh, we can mitigate the risk. For example, in target case, they have very weak uh, authentication mechanism. They just have username password. And then you put in uh, strong authentication, multi-factor authentication is a way to mitigate the risk. Okay? And you can have different types of uh, mitigations, controls. It can be administrative. So that's where you have laws, you have regulations uh, like PCI or those. Uh, uh, so that's administrative. Or you can have a uh, technical or logical risk, of, uh, logical um, control. For example, you add a firewall, you add strong authentication. Those are belong to technical. Or you can have uh, physical control. For example, you add, uh, you add a lock to your door, right? That's a physical control. Now, how does that relate to the picture we saw earlier? Right, so we have a threat agent uh, want to exploit our vulnerabilities which produce the risk that threatens our assets. So control is here that basically used to protect your, uh, your asset. And uh, uh, the risk is mitigated by the control. So um, one of the things, as, as I mentioned before, that I really struggled with when I first started doing risk management was the tool set. Um, the very first thing that I tried to do is I tried to use an Excel spreadsheet and Word documents linked uh, by that Excel spreadsheet in order to track all the risks in my environment. And as you can imagine, like one risk, cool, works just fine. Two risks, maybe even ten risks, it was fine. Once I got upwards of there, it was hell to manage. And so, you know, I had to find something else. Um, my organization was writing Lowest Notes at the time, so I was like, cool, Notes database, let's try that one. Um, Lowest Notes databases it worked pretty well. I, I would imagine you know it works about as well as like FileMaker Pro would work. Um, but every time I, I had to you know have something changed in the system or, or whatnot, I had to go to a Notes admin and I had to. It was six months before I could get that change made. Um, and then ironically, like I tried to change my risk formula. Karen showed the likelihood uh, times impact formula. I was like, hey, I wonder what would happen if I did weighted likelihood or weighted impact because I read something cool about them and I had them update the formula and then I had to reopen every single one of my risks and resave every risk to get the new uh, calculation to take place. Um, it was incredibly frustrating. 
Uh, so for me, I struggled really, really big um, when I was first getting started. Uh, and what I started doing is I started looking at other tools that were like meant for this task. And I found there were like Archer and CA and all these other huge companies had these tools with really complicated workflows that took a full-time employee just to run it about half a million dollars to buy it. And I was dumb enough to actually take that to my VP. And I was like, you want risk management, it's going to cost you a half a million dollars and a full-time employee. You want to know what happened? She laughed at me, right? Literally laughed at me. Uh, and so it, you know, it didn't make me feel very good, but um, you know, I went from there. I was like, okay, well, you know, maybe if she doesn't want to pay for the whole thing, maybe I can get the legal team and the trade compliance guys and the health and safety guys. I'll get everybody in a room. We'll give them the whole risk management dog and pony show, and we'll show them what it's all about, and then they'll want to chip in and pay for it too. So I got them all there. We, they saw it. Um, vendor left, and I was like, so guys, what do you think? It's pretty cool, huh? And they're like, yeah, that's awesome. We could definitely use that. It's like, all right, cool. I need 50000 from you, 50000 from you. They're like, wait, you want us to pay for this? No. Okay, so back to the drawing board. This was about four years ago or so. Um, and finally, I was like, look, I can't afford this big tool over here. These ones suck. Um, uh, you know, I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put myself to work, and I'm going to write something. And so really what I did, I started with these values. I was like, I need something that's going to track risks, that's going to allow me to plan mitigations for those risks, and that's going to enforce some sort of a review cycle. I needed something that had the flexibility of a spreadsheet, but would scale to hundreds, if not thousands, of risks in my environment. And I need something that would allow us to focus on managing the risk rather than hiring an employee to manage a tool uh, to do it. And so, um, like I said, I ended up writing Simple Risk. And, and you won't forget that name because if you look at your bag, it's got the logo on there. Um, so you'll take that home with you. Um, but the, the end result of it is it's free. It's open source. It's a Mozilla Public License 2.0, which means you can literally take it and resell it today if you want to do that. Um, it's got multiple different ways that you can deploy it. Today, we're going to play with a hosted version, but you could just as easily deploy a virtual in, uh, appliance for free in your environment or take a tarball and install it on your own server. So don't worry about any of that. Um, in any case, let's get back here. So we talked about Target earlier, right? Um, Target is a, is a prime example of a company that really should have done a better risk assessment. So we're going to look at specifically uh, the example that we gave, right? In this case, the risk that we're really looking at is that their secure systems, their environment could be compromised through the theft of supplier credentials. So let's do this. I'm going to put my little microphone here to the side, and we're going to minimize that a little bit. Hopefully you can still hear me be like a, a rapper using my hands and, and whatnot. Um, and what I have here is Simple Risk. I spun up a system. Um, you all will be able to log into the system in just a second. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and log in. I've got the, the elite admin privileges here. This is Simple Risk, right? Um, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, I wanted a system that was going to be able to submit risks, plan mitigation, perform reviews, and then create a cyclical process where I can do that. So everything there should be immediately obvious to you. So in this case, let me, I'm going to pull this guy down a little bit, exit the full screen. Do, do, do. OK, so we decide that our risk is secure systems, secure systems compromised through theft of supplier credentials. And Karen made a really good point earlier when she was talking about this, that there is a key difference between a vulnerability and a risk. When we looked at this earlier, um, you know, the vulnerability might be um, that the, that the uh, HVAC vendor um, wasn't using multi-factor authentication or um, that you know, somebody was able to get in through a phishing attack or something like that. That's not really what we're looking at here. What we're looking at is what is the actual risk involved here? And so once we've entered the subject of the risk, we've got that, we can give it a category. In this case, um, this is probably like a third party uh, management. That seems pretty legit. We can give a location, so we're going to tell it the target data center. Um, if we have some sort of control regulation or something like that, um, you know, maybe it's PCI DSS or something like that, we can put that in there. Um, Karen talked a little bit about assets. You know, maybe this asset is um, you know, some server. We'll put that in there. We can give it a technology if there's a certain technology that's, uh, that involves it. We can give it a team. We can tell you know, who's going to own this, who their manager is. 
Um, and so we can basically go through and do all that. The next piece, once we have our risk in the system, uh, let's give it a source too. This is a, we'll say uh, external. Um, the next piece is scoring that risk. So in this case, we have our risk scoring method, and we've got multiple things. These are all the things that Karen mentioned to us already. Classic scoring, CVSS, DREAD, OWASP, custom. And the whole idea behind this was we could take any of those, put them on the same 0 through 10 scale, and be able to use them interchangeably. So in this case, let's just use classic risk since that's the easiest, but we could have just as easily said CVSS and scored it using the CVSS scoring methodology. In this case, let's say the likelihood of something like this happening is credible. Um, the impact would probably be pretty uh, major, we'll say that. Um, extreme catastrophic, in my opinion, is like people are dying, buildings are collapsing, things like that. that that's like really bad, right? And then once we do that, we can give it an assessment. We can add some notes if we want to. We can attach files, do whatever. And once we do that, we can submit the risk. And so our risk is in the system. And we can go and we can say, show me risk 1001. And it will give us the information about that risk. And based on the information that we've put in, the likelihood and the impact, it gives us that risk score. And we can see all the information there. Now, if we want, we can go and plan a mitigation for this. So what do you guys think? What would be the mitigation for secure systems compromised through uh, theft of credentials? This is where we start getting into LARPing. This is like LARPing baby steps. So if we can't even answer this question, man, we got no hope for the next one, right? <laughs> Multi-factor authentication, perfect. I expect that answer from you, Claire. Thank you. All right. Yes, yeah, Claire, Claire uh, multi-factor authentication, um, absolutely. So if we go in here and we say, all right, let's plan a mitigation for this guy, right? Um, we can go here. It tells us no mitigation is planned yet. Our strategy here would be to mitigate. Um, our effort with that, that's pretty considerable, wouldn't you say, Claire? That's it's significant. Significant. All right, so we'll say it's significant. Um, what do you think for cost? Uh, You've done a lot of research in this area. Expensive. I go to um, middle. 400 to 500,000. 400 to 500,000? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so by default, our mitigation owner is going to be our, our owner for the risk. We could change that. Um, our team on this, uh, who, who do you normally see owning that? Um, Inf IT. IT? We'll put IT systems management, okay. Um, so then we can, we can say our solution is, uh, uh, so we have no current solution, uh, none today. Our requirements are gonna be multi-factor authentication. Um, we won't have any recommendations for this. When we're all done, we say submit mitigation, right? And now we have our mitigation there. We can see that that disappeared from here. Now the next step, once we have our mitigation uh, and our risk planned, would be for somebody in management. Remember, Karen said that this is a business decision. It's somebody from management to go in here and do a management review. So they're going to go in, they're going to look at the risk, right? They're going to see, oh, here's the details of the risk. There's the mitigation. Yeah, it's going to cost a lot of money, but I guess we'll spend some money on that. So they're going to prove the risk. They're going to say, my next step is to consider this for a project. And they might say, you know, um, have as much money as you need. <laughs> right? You guys get that, right? Every, every, that's totally the response I get from my management. And now, now we've got our risk in there. So when we go and we do our regular reviews, we can see the information about that risk. We can see you know, how many days it's open, when the next time it's supposed to be reviewed, all that stuff. And all that information is configurable within the system. So this gives us the ability to really easily uh, submit our risk, plan our mitigation, perform the reviews, just like NIST taught us to, right? Okay. So now that we've done that, now we get to move into LARPing, right? And so with this, here's what we're going to do. You guys are going to be submitting our risk. So you can see here I've created some names. Um, username and password, Alice, Alice, Bob, Bob, Charlie, Charlie, Daniel, Daniel, Edward, Edward. Hopefully you guys can remember that because that's A, B, C, D, E. Um, you guys know that, right? Alphabet, yeah, okay. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Karen is going to be our risk manager. So she's going to kind of guide us along this exercise. Um, and the really cool thing about this is before, what, uh, three days ago, Karen had never logged into Simporis before. So this, for her, this is a totally new experience kind of doing this risk management piece. You guys are going to be our volunteers. So I'm going to need a couple of actors to kind of act out the scenario. Um, and then you guys are also going to be the ones submitting the risk. So you can log in, lastcon.simforce.com. That's HTTPS, right? You can enter the username and password, any of those. Pick your favorite one, um, whatever. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to go through this exercise. So rules here, this is totally uncharted territory. I mentioned that earlier. I've never seen anybody do LARPing before at a security conference. So it could go very right or it could go very wrong. I'm hoping very right, right? Um, in any case, don't take things too seriously. Um, nobody here is going to make fun of you, but we're all going to laugh together. So there will be laughing. Um, no touching, that's where that leads to lawsuits and sexual harassment and things like that. We don't want to go there. But overall, right, we want to have fun. So here's what I need. We have our first scenario is going to be a physical security scenario, and I need two volunteers. Come on. All right, we've got Claire. I need one more. All right, absolutely. So here's what we're going to do. This is going to be really awesome. Um, I have two people. You guys can stand up. All right. All right. Can you say your name for the audience? My name is Claire. Claire. Boyd. Boyd. All right, so we have Claire and Boyd. And here's what we're going to do. So I am going to read the script, and you guys are going to act this out. And this is perfect because the script actually has a guy and a girl in this. So in this case, um, Boyd, you are going to be playing Wendell. Um, Wendell is, is a gentleman. Uh, Wendell is, um, is, is an employee of the company. Um, and you are, are just coming back from lunch, sir. You're, you're going to be um, walking in the door, okay? And you, you, all, the rest I'll kind of explain. Claire, you, you are the evil person, all right? <laughs> you, you get to be, uh, yeah, Claire, uh, evil Claire. Um, actually, you're going to be uh, just a, a random woman who's going to walk in through the door, right? Okay, so now we're going to act out. I'm going to read the script, all right? Wendell's coming back from lunch one day. Come, come on, back from lunch. He swipes his badge to get into the building. Swipe your badge, all right. As he walks through the door, he notices a woman behind him who has her hands full with a drink and a bag of food. Excellent. He thinks to himself, poor girl. She must have had to run out, quickly grab some food, bring back because he's so busy. Look at that. That was perfect. <laughs> he doesn't want to see her struggle, so he holds the door open for her. And she says, thank you. Say thank you. Thank you. And walks quickly past him and then disappears down another hallway. Perfect. All right. Thank you, guys. That was awesome. All right. So now it's your turn as the audience. Now we need to figure out what is the risk in this scenario. They've acted it out for you. You guys log into SimpleRisk. Remember, uh, Alice, Bob, uh, Charlie, Edward, Dan Daniel, I think, something like that. Um, those guys, Charlie, Daniel, Edward, right? Log into SimpleRisk, and you submit your risk. A, B, C, D, yeah. So you guys log in. We'll give you a minute or so, a couple minutes. Submit your risk. I don't see a lot of people submitting risks. I see five, six, seven. Uh, go to, just like I, I showed you here. All right? No, no, we'll, we'll, we'll do it together. This is, this is the cool thing. So we go here. We go to risk management. Submit risk. Actually, just clicking risk management will automatically take you there. Give it a subject. If you want to fill out the rest, you can. The only thing that, that's actually necessary is the subject. Everything else can be technically left blank. Give some thought to the subject, too. Remember, this isn't just a vulnerability. This is a risk. So let's think about that one. You don't have to fill it all out. Just give it a subject for now. Yep. What is the risk? What, what did you just witness uh, our, our two wonderful volunteers? Yep, yeah. Alice, Bob, Charlie, Daniel, Edward. A, B, C, D, E. Nope, all lowercase. All lowercase, that's right. Oh, hate those iPhones. All right. Ooh, we, we've got one risk submitted so far. All right. Oh, we've got another one. All right. This LARPing thing is working so far. Good job, guys. Give it a, another, we'll say a minute. Yeah, that's the default. So we're, we're, one of the things that we're noticing up here is that because we're not filling out any of the, the likelihood of the impact, anything like that, doing a risk calculation, by default it's giving us a score of 10. So that's fine. Um, if you want to, you absolutely could change that. And we can actually go in here and change it too. 
that might be part of what our risk manager is going to do. Do you want to pick one of those to, to actually work on? Okay, yeah, grab one. All right. So we're, we're kind of moving. Yep. So let's move this over a little bit. And then, yep, viewer scoring details. Yeah. We're going to update our classic score. So Karen decided that 1003 uh, was, was one she wanted to change the score on. Let me just take the, yep, update. All right, our risk manager has changed the score on one of them. All right, so let's, let's go back to reporting and looks, let's look at submitted risk by day. Okay, so now, ooh, somebody even performed a, oh, that's the one that I had done, right? Yep, management review, okay. All right, so um, I went into my submitted risk by date report and what this is gonna do is this is gonna show us all the risks submitted into the system here, um, ordered uh, basically by the date and the risk score. So we can see all that information in there. Um, do you want which, which one of these? Uh, well, I like I like 1002. That that's my favorite. Get back. And 1002. That that one's good. Ooh, on-site lunch. Man, you guys submitted some some good ones. Okay. All right. So we've got our risk submissions at this point. So let's read the rest of our scenario. What Wendell didn't know is that a woman was using social engineering to get him to hold the door for her so she wouldn't need a badge to get in. When she disappeared down the hallway, she found a conference room, plugged into the network, and stole the company's top secret next generation widget designs. Way to go. All right. So uh, we, uh, we need to plan the mitigation. Let's yep, yeah, risk, okay. Right? So, so now, now we have our risk. Yep. Now we plan the mitigation. Karen's going to plan the mitigation. Oh. And who is clicking All right, so we, let's pick one of these. Tailgating all the beer could be stolen. <laughs> Man, that would be bad. We have somebody who tried a cross-site scripting attack. Good job. I like that. Simperos validates all outputs, or it does HTML encoding on the outputs. We prevent the cross-site scripting. I would expect no less from a bunch of security people. All right, so Karen is editing the mitigation. I feel like the play-by-play -play announcer is made. Now she's going to plan her strategy. Which strategy will she choose? She is going to choose mitigate yeah. for 100. Uh, How much effort is involved? Which mitigation? What do you guys think? How should we mitigate this? How do we mitigate? How do you think we should mitigate? How would we, how would we mitigate? Yeah, Tailgating. Tailgate. Shaming. <laughs> make sure he has a badge. Uh, what do you who, think, boy? A guard. Use a guard. Yeah, use a guard. Ooh. Yeah, no tailgating. That's great. And yeah, yeah, man trap. I heard that one. That was great. All right, so we're we're entering multiple requirements here. That that will end it absolutely. <laughs> All right, so Karen Karen has gone into risk 1002 tail game by non-employee random strangers. Um, she has said that she's going to mitigate this. Uh, right now, we don't have an effort selected. Let's let's uh, make an effort. Um, it's yeah. Yeah, so uh, we talk about a different type of control. So we have administrative. So the, the, the training and the no tail sign uh, sign, this I think is all belong to uh, administrative, right? You have security guideline that you, you should pay attention, nobody follows you, right? And if we do a man, man strap, it's more of a, a, a physical, um, physical control, yeah. And maybe we can have a like a monitoring system that can automatically shut the door. And if it's a, your batch one's coming in too, that will some kind of a logical control, right? So we can have different type of control. For the sake of uh, want to put on something, um, I put uh, several 
suggestions that you made. Okay, so um, go click save. Or, not yet. Oh, yeah. The medication not uh, yet. Let's say consider, considerable. All right. right? Considerable. Yep. Sounds considerable. How much to me? do you think it will cost? Well, that man trap is probably pretty expensive. Yeah. Let's go for half a million dollars for. Okay, yeah. we'll go here. Yeah. yeah. All right. So and then we just. Um, we can. Yeah. yeah. Just put some names there. Excellent. Go ahead and um, click save yeah. mitigation. Branch management. All right. Yeah. Save mitigation. All right. So that with that one uh, one thing, we've gone ahead. We've assessed our risk. Good job, guys. We have submitted our risk into our risk uh, management system. Awesome. Um, and we have planned a mitigation in here. And now we would want to go to our management. We'd say, here's the risk. Here's the mitigation that we've planned. Please go ahead and give us the money for this. Here's the priority. You know, here's here's the risk score if this thing were to happen. And we've got all the information for that. So this is how we use it. Um, and let's. Then we can review. Yeah. Then we yes, sir. Um, so you can change the values in there. So like, if you want to add more, you know, more locations or. Yeah, absolutely. You can definitely do that. You, yeah, yeah. Um, so we planned this, or we need to review. Well, let, let's let's skip the review because we're running low on time. We we've, we've got like three minutes left. Okay. So we had a couple other scenarios, but we're going to skip that for the sake of time. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to kind of sum up uh, our conclusion here, right? Um, so when it comes to architecting a security program, um, the takeaways for this thing, you have to create a risk-aware culture. You have to make sure that people are aware of the risks in their environment, that you're, you're giving people the opportunity to report those risks to you, that you're giving them a system that they can capture those risks in. In my environment, every single one of the IT employees has the ability to submit risks into our database, which means if they find an issue while they're working on a project, they submit, they move on, right? So we have to create a risk-aware culture. People are actively thinking about this. We have to have a process for managing our risks. Use simple risk, don't use simple risk. Whatever you guys do, you have to have a process in place that says, here's the steps that you're supposed to take. The whole goal of the risk management process is to drive visibility and accountability upwards. We want our executives to see the risks involved in our environment because that's how we get the money to fix those things. If we don't do that, we don't have that. Um, we want to communicate risk to the business stakeholders, right, because they're the ones with the purse strings. And we should always be using risk as a means of resource prioritization. Otherwise, the business doesn't know where to spend the money. So with that, I think our time is up. Thank you all for participating.